guys, welcome to Excel and MathSci and today we'll be looking at how to find a stationary point of a function and how to determine the nature. Now before we do that, I would like to refer to the curve on the right and just quickly remind you what a stationary point is. A stationary point is where the gradient function is equal to zero. In other words, dy by dx is equal to zero. So when we differentiate this function, okay, at that point, that function is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So you've got the three points here, minimum, point of inflection, and maximum. So let's go and differentiate this function. So we have the function y is equal to, so we have, so that's 3x cubed plus 9x squared plus 2. So if we differentiate this function, if we do dy by dx, that would give me 9x squared plus 18x. Now we know that at stationary points, the dy by dx, so that's the differentiated function, the dy by dx is equal to 0. In other words, this function here is equal to 0. So we, say, we can say that 9x squared plus 18x is equal to 0. Now this is a quadratic, so what we can do, we can factorize this. I can take the common factor out, so I can take 9x out, and I'm left with x plus 2 is equal to 0. So now I have two points, the x values for the stationary points, which is x is equal to 0, or x is equal to minus 2. Now to get the y values for the stationary points, all I need to do is sub substitute these values into the original function. So at, at x is equal to 0, y would simply equal to 2. Why? Because if I just substitute 0 in here, I'll get a 0 for this, 0 for that, and I'll only be left with 2. So that's a nice and easy calculation there. So if I've got x is equal to minus 2, and I substitute that into the original function, so that would give me 3 minus 2 all cubed plus 9 minus 2 all squared plus 2. And that should come out to be 14. So now I have two stationary points. So I have my stationary point 1 is 0, 2, and the other one is minus 2, 14. So now that I've got my stationary points, now I want to know whether it's a minimum point inflection or a maximum. Now, in order to do that, what we do, we drop a nature's table. I'll show you two different ways to do this, and then we'll look at the second derivative test. So in here, we'll put our x values, and this would be the differentiated function dy by dx, which is this function here. So any value less than minus 2, greater than minus 2, and that would be 0, and any value greater than 0. So the way with the nature table would work, of course, we need some value. Okay, we want to find what the gradient function is going to be when the value is less than minus 2. So say for example, x is equal to minus 3. We want to see whether the gradient is positive or negative. So if it's negative 3, I'll substitute negative 3 in here. So negative 3 plus 2 will give me negative 1. 9 times negative 3 will give me negative 27. Negative 27 times negative 1 will give me a positive. And I know the gradient function is 0 at minus 2, and of course it's 0 at the stationary point. So now I need to find when the function, the gradient function, is between minus 2 and 0, say minus 1. What is it? Is it positive or negative? So let's say x is negative 1. So 9 times negative 1 will give me negative 9. Negative 1 plus 2 will give me plus 1. Plus 1 times negative 9 will give me a negative. 
and of course any value greater than zero will give me a positive value as you can see from here so a gradient will be positive from there onwards what do we have so we have a positive gradient a zero gradient a negative gradient zero gradient and a positive gradient so we have a max turning point at minus 2 14 and we have a minimum turning point at 0 2 now the other test that I was talking about that is a second derivative test and the second derivative test basically what we do we've got the dy by dx okay so we bring our dy by dx so I'll just rewrite it here so what we do is we differentiate this function again okay so we differentiate this function again and we get 18x plus 18 now if the second derivative okay when you substitute the values of your stationary points if the second derivative is greater than zero then you have a minimum and if you have d squared dx squared is less than zero then you have a maximum and if d squared d squared y dx squared is equal to zero it could be a minimum maximum it's basically inconclusive so let's check this and see if it matches up with that if i say my stay one of my stationary points x is equal to just move this up a bit so x is equal to minus 2 so if i substitute that into my second derivative i would get 18 times minus 2 plus 18 which would give me minus 18 so since the second derivative is less than zero it's a max and that's what we've got at minus 2 we've got a max so it matches up with that and if x is equal to zero that would mean so if i substitute that into my second derivative so i'll get 18 times 0 plus 18 that will give me 18 so that means that the second derivative function is greater than 0 because it's 18 which is greater than 0 hence we have a minimum and that's what we've got here as well so summarizing everything so we've got 0 2 so we've got a minimum at 0 2 and max at minus 2 14 hope this helps and please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon and thank you for watching this video